Sometimes a product comes along which reminds you why you're doing what you're doing and really gets you excited and even if you're lucky, surprises you still after a decade long of motherboarding, reviewing, motherboard, reviewing, whatever I'm saying, you get my drift. C come closer. Um, ASRock just released its OCF variant, the, the Taishi X870E OCF, which focuses heavily on the enthusiast uh, community of all kinds and modified the motherboard to fuel the most extreme overclocking experiments and resist to catastrophically low temperatures. So yeah, we are in the liquid nitrogen side of things. But surprisingly, these changes are so good, it so happens, that I cannot imagine my life anymore without them. So, starting with the obvious. The Taishi X870E OCF shows off an unprecedented 10 low signal loss server graded PCB layers reinforced by two ounces copper plates, something I've never seen ever before on a motherboard. I mean, to put things back into context, when you're dealing with a PCIe 5.0 enabled motherboard, six PCB layers is, is correct, it's okay. It'll, it'll do the, the job. Having eight layers is kind of really where you want to be in terms of sturdiness, robustness for your motherboard, lifespan, cooling, all that. But 10, ASRock is putting its engineering balls on the table, staring at the competition, daring to go where nowhere else dares to go. And in addition, we also have this gorgeous thick protective backplate which doubles up as heat shield thanks to a collection, nay, a mosaic of very thick and sticky thermal pads. So yeah, and for the first time ever, I am giving 10 out of 10 on the PCB section of the Taishi X870E ASRock with a very massive, beautiful, innovative kudos to ASRock for this. Now, design-wise, well, uh, the motherboard plays on different brushing techniques to contrast metal effects and render a very, I want to say, spacey feel. The overall design cross-cuts through the different metal dressing with a bright yellowish-orange underline giving some dynamic feel. A very energetic feel to an otherwise mineral world. RGB-wise, the Taishi comes dressed with a long side RGB strip embedded below the chipset main plate, and even though I am not a fan of such RGB attempts, it is bright enough to actually give some aesthetic value to the motherboard. The VRM main block also shines in its very own way with a more diffuse but still very intense RGB care, and if that was not enough, we have an additional 4 a RGB connectors to tell the world that you've been through fourth grade and know the colors of the rainbow. Now, more technically, the Taishi X870 He OCF is powered by AMD's GoTo Combo. On one hand, our AM5 CPU socket supports a wide range of Ryzen processors and providing the fast and yummy 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes we are all yearning for. On the other, we have our dual Promote 21 chips forming the top of its range X870E chipset, which will add a bunch of legacy lanes for our everyday peripheral, as well as USB 4 and Wi-Fi 7, which are 2025 must have features. Temperature wise, well, our thick thermal block does an amazing job at keeping uh, our uh, chipset below 40 degrees Celsius all along my numerous PCH stress tests, something which will further add to this motherboard durability. Now, VRM wise, well, we have a monstrous 25 110 amps power stages uh, organized in a 22 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 configuration for an extravagant sun melting 2600 amps worth of juice, 2400 of which is laser focused on your never touched pretty little Ryzen. This is a VRM designed uh, to break every kind of overclocking record whilst keeping uh, a stable operation. Now, a special mention on how 110 amps power stages can change your computing experience. For one, well, no matter the CPU, it will be very difficult to push your 110 amps power stages 
beyond 40 or 50 percent usage and clearly that means well a, a cooler power stage and let's mention that we're dealing with direct phases here so no latency loss uh, through doublers and a very quick and calibrated voltage adjustment to cater uh, to every rapid clock change obviously the best of the best of the best but i would be a miss not to mention the capacitors themselves which are the most robust i've ever seen on a motherboard since they are 20,000 hours certified. To put things again back into context, um, the most expensive AMD motherboards out there, namely the ROG Apex or the X870 e Extreme, which I've reviewed and should be checking if you haven't done so yet, feature only 10,000 hours certified capacitors, which used to be the top of the industry. Well, not anymore. Now, the cooling solution is no less extraordinaire with a two cooling block segments linked by a wide 8 mm copper pipe for a more homogeneous heat spread. Both blocks are wide and dense and have plenty of radiating area spanning from several wide winglets to a large extended roof. But what really takes the cherry off the hat um, is this 3.5 mm fan encapsulated in the main VRM block providing some serious active cooling airflow in order to keep most of the power stages cool even in the most intense overclocking experiments. And while well, temperature results are just absolutely gorgeous to witness, after an hour long of synthetic stress test, the main VRM block stayed ice cooled uh, at 33 degrees Celsius uh, and the side block well, didn't <laughs> go much higher with 37 degrees Celsius. These are not normal results, at least not with this kind of clocks. And yeah, I provide a ton of headroom in order to go towards those you know, record breaking overclocking session. So I can say uh, overclocking being as stable as a Chihuahua in heat, as rock as cleverly provided pre-programmed buttons, which will preset your CPU voltage and clock. Clearly overclocking cannot get more user friendly than this. So big gigantic kudos to ASRock for this one and a well-deserved 9.5 out of 10. Uh, another first, I believe. Now, RAM wise, well, our board can support up to 128 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM in a single DIMM yet dual channel configuration and can go up to, wait for it, 10,400 million transfers per second with a Ryzen 8000 processor. Um, if you go with the 9000 processors, it's 8,400 million transfers per second, which is more common, still extremely fast, and I had no problem to get there thanks to the most performance-centric RAM out there, uh, our Viper Extreme 5 from Patriot, please. Now, storage-wise, well, why not giving us the most amount of NVMe seen on a motherboard ever. We have six M.2 solid state drive connectors, starting with our blazing two four lanes at PCIe 5.0 enabled uh, connectors, which can transfer up to a top of the industry 128 gigabit per second each. But being the fastest also translates into being the hottest, a sentence you won't here outside of a motherboard review. And that's why both received the bulk of the cooling attention here with double-sided thermal pads and generous heat blocks. I did obviously test them with about the fastest PCIe 5.0 NVMe in existence and in both cases temperatures stayed below 40 degrees Celsius at all time, which means that you'll get that full speed more often than not. Next come three PCIe4 chipset fed NVMEs, which can go up to still plenty uh, uh, fast 64 gigabit per second, except this one, which only received two PCIe 4.0 lanes, therefore capped at 32 gigabit per second. And finally, we have a rare and mysterious four lanes at the older uh, legacy PCIe 3.0 standard for also 32 gigabit per second. And this old bunch is also kept cool by a massive thermopadded heat plate slammed onto their faces. Lucky them. Now, I do have to give a slight critique here. Uh, the main PCIe 5.0 NVMe got a nice release latch for its cooling block, which is very nice and user-friendly. But I would have loved to see release latches on the other plates. 
as well. So maybe something that Azra could, uh, you know, change in the next iteration of the Taishi series. Now, export wise, well, our Taishi OCF has three export slots, two of which are PCIe 5.0 enabled. So a dual GPU motherboards, uh, hence the metallic reinforcements on both of those. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can give us access to a future proofing 16 lanes at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning that this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances. Now, in a dual GPU uh, situation, our exports share lanes and will find themselves in an 8x8 eight eight PCIe 5.0 configuration, which is more than enough bandwidth for any of the graphics cards on the market today. Worth mentioning, our main and most likely used GPU export come with ASRock very own GPU eject mechanism. Always nice to see. Now, I'd like to uh, note the presence of a third dual slot export cleverly placed before the first GPU export, avoiding any kind of air obstruction to your graphics card and fast enough to support, I don't know, anything between additional storage to a capture card. Overall, um, yeah versatile enough to cater both to gamers and production-centric users as well. Now, back IO-wise, well, our Taishi X870 OCF comes loaded with a bunch of rather fast USB plugs, including two very fast USB 4 plugs for a generous total of 160 gigabit per second worth of data swap. Now, worth noting, the blue plugs, usually signaling 5 gigabit data swaps, here are actually 10 a bit confusing in my opinion. In addition, we do have a hefty 50 gigabit per second worth of front panel connectors, giving us a grand total of 210 gigabit per second worth of data swap. So yeah, we are in the upper end of the bandwidth spectrum once more. Now let's note the fact that both of our front panel uh, type C's can charge up to 36 watts each uh, uh, pretty nice for our phone fast charging, but remember to plug in this PCIe plug in order for it to work that fast. Connectivity wise, we have a rather good NAS friendly 5 gigabit plug and our low latency fast 6 gigabit per second Wi-Fi 7 adapter. Nothing but gold here. Now, audio wise, it's just absolutely grand. We have a premium ALC4082 audio codec from Realtek, which will use 130 dB SNR DAC to output some of the most crystalline audio in existence, the whole cleansed and filtered by our German-made polypropylene film-based WIMA capacitors, which are expensive and rare enough to find on any kind of motherboard and will ensure a studio-graded sound production. I mean, I don't usually get that excited about integrated audio solution, but obviously ASRock has spent uh, unhealthy amount of time uh, trying to change that. Overall, the back IO is a good representation uh, of ASRock messaging all along this motherboard story. We are the best, we give you the best, so please stop calling at night. Obviously, this overdose of components uh, and options and features well surpasses the available PCIe lanes provided by the chipset and the processor. So here comes my world famous bit, PCIe bifurcation. Now, most noticeably, the second uh, PCIe 5.0 NVMe and the USB 4 plugs share four PCIe 5.0 lanes. Either all the lanes go to the NVMe, sacrificing your USB 4s, or the other way around. But you can get both to work, uh, but at half the advertised speed, which, by the way, is the out-of-the-box configuration. Same story for uh, these two, which shares four PCIe 4.0 lanes. Either they are focused on the dual export or are shared equally with this NVMe. But most importantly here, our GPU will never be affected by any other of the components, uh, uh, which is kind of a important caveat. Now, cooling wise, the Taishi X870E OCF has what it needs for a solid airflow build with its seven PWM fan connectors, including one which doubles up as an all-in-one water pump connector. We also have a couple of thermistor sensors here for more detailed thermal situation inside your chassis, but obviously you can't really appreciate the cooling situation if you don't understand that this motherboard was also meant to be used with a liquid nitrogen uh, 
cooling apparatus. Hence, a LN2 switch right here, an OCF only feature, which will help uh, the motherboard bypass cold boot and even weird memory behavior uh, that you can see when you go to minus 100 uh, degrees Celsius, because yeah, that's what you will be doing from now on every Sunday, isn't it? Now, even more crucially, the troubleshooting aspect of this motherboard is laser focused to track the exact reason why it's, well, not working the way you want it to work, going from the error OLED screen to a dual BIOS function. So if one of your BIOS gets corrupted, well, the board can boot in any of these BIOS on the flip of your finger. Now, in conclusion, the ASRock X870E OCF will cost you around 500 bucks before taxes in the US or uh, 500 euros including taxes in the EU. The pricing, while not being cheap per se, is way below its competition on equivalent specs. And actually, when I say equivalent specs, I'm not being fair to ASRock because it doesn't only feature every single premium features you'll find on its natural competition, like the ROG Crosshair X870E Apex, which costs 200 bucks more, but it surpasses them in every single aspect. This is one of the most focused motherboard I've been given the pleasure to toy uh, around with. It, this thing is engineered inside out and maybe most importantly you can feel that the engineers really had fun and thankfully this motherboard was not just meant for people who do liquid nitrogen cooling this is an amazing motherboard for gamer uh, overclocker enthusiasts custom water coolers production minded user or just even if you're a rock at the bottom of the ocean simply said there is nowhere else your money need, wants, and begs you to be. Mm.